morning. I'm Charles Osgood, and this is Sunday Morning. Tonight is Oscar night, and we'll be looking at the movies and the people who make them throughout the morning. Today, he's a sheer genius. A very long way to come for a man who started out as a shampoo boy. Tracy Smith has a Sunday profile of Vidal Sassoon. It was the swinging 60s, a new age in music and art, fashion and style. Heady times for a young English hairdresser who took the era and put a crown on it. Did you see yourself as a revolutionary? Very much so. Vidal Sassoon wanted to change the world, or at least its hair. He created blunt, geometric styles that were very cutting edge. Women found them liberating. I wanted everybody to have good hair, not just the people that could have it set once a week and combed out during the week so they could go to the Ritz for lunch. It wasn't just a, the rich lady's pleasure. And it was a wash and wear kind of thing. That's what they called it, wash and wear, which I found very insulting. Why is that? <laughs> well, because the respect wasn't there. The respect would come soon enough. Thank you, Vito. Sassoon built an empire out of salons and schools and shampoo. We call it Sassooning. I'm Vidal Sassoon. And if you don't look good, we don't look good. Sassooning. What does it mean? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it meant a way of work. I mean, you really are arguably the first celebrity hairdresser. I'm a crimper from way back. <laughs> now, the life story of this 83-year-old crimper is told in a new documentary, Vidal Sassoon, the movie. Are you ready, Ryan? Hi. I'm Ryan. You're Ryan. And in his about-to-be-released autobiography. Sassoon's improbable journey began in the tenements of London's East End. He was abandoned by his father and sent for a time to an orphanage by his mother who couldn't afford to care for him. Still, she had a vision for her son. She took me by the arm and said, I've had the strongest premonition that you're going to be a hairdresser. Young Vidal wasn't interested. So you wanted to be anything but a hairdresser at that anything point. But. but when I walked into the salon, so, so many pretty girls. I thought, well, we'll give this a try. He started at 14 as a shampoo boy with a thick Cockney accent. In 1954, after some speech lessons, he opened his own salon in London. He admits it took nine years of trial and error to come up with his signature look. I noticed. But Sassoon believed he, not the customer, was always right. Why do you want it to go back? Give me one good reason. Gives me height up there. So all you're worried about is height, really. Yes. Not the fact that it goes back or forward. Yes, but I've always had it going back there because it... We don't go on what you've always had. Listen to me once. I just wouldn't do things that I didn't think were right. You were that sure of your vision? Yes. It's the only thing I had. He took that vision from London to New York to Hollywood. When they saw his new styles, many women went mad for them. Some men simply were mad, finding them boyish or unflattering. The debate even made it into film after Sassoon famously cut Mia Farrow's hair for the 1968 hit Rosemary's Baby. What? God! It's Vidal Sassoon. It's very in. What's wrong with you? Do I look that bad? Terrible. What do you think that cut did for your reputation? She got me involved in middle America. I was, I was one of them after Mia Farrow. Before then, I was one of these snooty fashion people. As his popularity grew, so did the number of imitators. 
Are you okay with that? Very. Original Sassoon. That may be because Sassoon was way ahead of the pack. He was one of the first to put his name on shampoos and hair dryers, which at their peak in the 90s had sales of half a billion dollars a year. Though he sold his businesses, they made him a wealthy man. For all his success, his personal life has had difficulties. I was a terrible family man. Really? Dreadful. Nobody could stand me for long. See, you mean wife-wise? Wife-wise. He was divorced three times before marrying Ronnie Holbrook, his wife of 22 years. They settled down in L.A., and he finally found happiness in marriage. But he wasn't immune from tragedy. Ten years ago, he lost his daughter, Katya. She OD'd on New Year's Eve. How do you work through something like that? Go to work. I did. I went back to work immediately. His work included building homes for victims of Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. His honors include being named commander of the Order of the British Empire. You look at it from the point of view of a 14-year-old shampoo boy who couldn't really speak the language properly, suddenly is in Buckingham Palace getting medals. So, can't be too bad. Last year, a bout with pneumonia nearly killed Vidal Sassoon. But he says his brush with mortality was actually comforting. I just lay back and thought, you have nothing to complain about. You have had a phenomenal adventure in life. And I have.